Hey everyone, Church of SDFU, so September 11th, um, and you know, I think we should always try to get our opinions out there, trying to be respectful and not offend anyone, even if you know you think that people might disagree with you, so that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, but as I said, I believe in respecting people and not making them intentionally upset, so uh, I hope that my video doesn't upset you. I want to talk about 9-11 in three different ways. The first one is the impact on the people that suffered in 9-11. If you get killed, that's your universe ending. So 3,000 universes were ended that day. Um, there's really for those people, there's nothing worse than death, is there? So in a way, the death of anyone is always an ultimate crime. And for their relatives as well, it doesn't matter if their 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 relatives died as part of a, a traffic accident that killed one, or as part of an event that killed thousands, or as part of an event that killed millions. The fact is, they're dead. So, to any who would um, minimize the suffering of those people, who would just uh, ignore it away or trivialize it. Remember that those people were, in fact, innocents. Like you or I, you know, they did not, they weren't responsible in any direct way for U.S. policies or something like that. Um, and so their deaths were certainly not any part of any tit for tat, and there cannot be any weighing up of their deaths against other deaths. So now I want to move on to the second part, which is the contextualization of 9-11 in world events and their families deserve our deepest condolences. Uh, well from there I want to move on to this second perspective on 9-11 and that's the kind of contextual perspective of where do these 3,000 fit in when we look at the world around us. Um, and I mean, in, just in the U.S., lack of health care kills 45,000 a year, estimated. I'll put the link down in the underbar. Um, so that's 15 September 11th every year. So, so where do those 3,000 deaths fit in um, looking at the world? Just in the U.S., inadequate health care or no health care at all kills 45,000 people a year, um, estimated. I'm going to put the relevant link in the underbar for you to check out. Um, so that's 15 September 11th every year. So since 9-11, we've had 150 9-11s in the U.S. due to insufficient medical care, due to the terrible um, costs incurred in the U.S., those incredibly high health care costs that are unlike anywhere else in the world and the very very poor access that people that don't have money have to healthcare. So when you weigh these things up I mean 150 times more deaths is a tremendous amount um, and when you look at the three trillion dollars that have been spent on the war on terror and when you look at the utterly insufficient um, approach to uh, healthcare the final health care healthcare compromise that was reached that does fairly little except tinker around the edges and um, guarantee insurers a market, then it's incredible to me how resources have been abused just in this context, just from an American's perspective. Uh, when you look at the whole world, we have 11 million children dying every year. That's about 1 in 10 children dies um, before they stop being children. Um, and 70% of them, uh, the deaths are attributed to diarrhea, malaria, neonatal infection, pneumonia, preterm delivery, or lack of oxygen at birth. These are all things that with proper um, kind of facilities or care could be dealt with especially a lot of these kind of poor access to water, unsanitary condition things, they would be incredibly easy to fix. 
Not incredibly easy, yeah, it does take billions of dollars. But when you compare the amount of suffering you could get out of the world for the money you invest, the investment is tiny. Especially when you compare it to the ridiculous investments in war that have been going on since then. So that's my second perspective. We have to take it in context and we have to say, I mean, the other thing is I believe those three trillion dollars that were invested, they made terrorism in my eyes at least more likely in many ways. So even if you thought that, you know, preventing another 9-11 was more important than these 45,000 deaths or these, uh, these 11 million deaths, then still I think the money has been very poorly applied. But the end, the end conclusion I have to come to is the world does have far more significant problems than terrorism. And this focus that the world has had since then has wasted so much energy, both economic and mental. Um, I mean, again, some of my viewers don't believe in it, but climate change, global warming is real. And the impact of that could be on a scale not because the world is going to explode in a fireball, but because it's going to affect crop yields and so on and so forth. That is unseen since uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago in times where we were still dealing with regular famines. And to expect us to have the technology to deal with that is very optimistic. Now the third is, the third perspective I want to come to 9-11 with, is the perspective of what actually the fruits of the response to 9-11 have been. Um, and that, I think, in some ways, is the saddest thing of all. After 1990, when we had the end of history, according to what's his Fukuyama, I believe, wrote that essay, there was this belief that uh, US style uh, capitalist democracy had won out. We were entering this age of peace. Um, and certainly, nothing really in that period from 1990, aside from the fact that there were loads of war in lots of places in the world that killed many, many people. But at least nothing in the developed world seemed to suggest otherwise. It was all going according to plan. Yeah, we had that bit of economic snafu, but you know. And then 9-11 happened. It was Comparatively, as I've now stated, it was a relatively minor, if hugely regrettable incident. We should have caught the people and we should have punished them. Um, but compared to, you know, the U.S. entering wars where, you know, the kind of tragedies that we had before, you know, world wars and things of that nature, it was a minor incident. So my hope would have been that the West would have, for in some ways the first time in history, shown the backbone to say, well, something has happened, we're angry, we're going to respond, but we're going to do so in a reasoned and um, proportional manner. And we're not going to violate our basic principles. That would have been perhaps the best motivator and the best sign that our values are actually good values and right values. Instead, the U.S. seemed determined to as quickly as possible throw out all of the values which it held so dear, supposedly. Human rights went out the window. Freedom was just a word that was, that was basically all it meant was killing Saddam and to hell with the consequences. All of the fundamentals of democracy and our system and our enlightenment kind of philosophy were warped and twisted. And the US government itself condoned and carried out torture, the most vile of crimes, on a state-sanctioned and state-executed basis. To me, that is... I mean, I, I still... The thing is, in a way, I would have expected this. I would have, I expected that to be the outcome. But boy, did I not want it to be the outcome. Boy, did I want there to be a, a, and I'm not, you know, it's not like I'm, 
I grew up loving America. Then I started having my doubts about various parts of American foreign policy um, as I looked into things more and I was made aware of things more. But I always had the feeling, you know, we've, we've gone through a, you know, this tough time and the Cold War and, you know, there was always this excuse for these people to, uh, to usurp this power and use it in evil ways. But now there's really no excuse left. And they took something that was nothing, that was no excuse. And they created a wave of fear and hatred in which Americans, just like everyone else, were swept aside. People lost their jobs and were hated by the public because they refused to back a war that was illegal, unnecessary, and cruel. Uh, America has, through the last decade, um, lost so much of its credibility. And then came Obama and supposed redemption. He didn't shut down Guantanamo. He didn't stop the Patriot Act. He did not stand for protecting the basic freedoms that are supposed to be part, a holy and untouchable part of this American and this Western ideal. And the rest of the world, they're watching. China's watching. We held them to account over human rights. Everyone's watching and they're saying, see, it was all bullshit all along. And I mean, I'm afraid it was. It really was bullshit all along. There were people calculating in back rooms, smoking their cigars, thinking about how to make America or the West more powerful, how to get their hands on more resources. That's all it was ever about and how to keep populations quiet. And that was, you know, democracy in the home country was a good means for doing that. And doing whatever it took in other places in the name of democracy was a good way of getting what we wanted out of there. Um, and, you know, I mean, I guess you could say that the shallowness of the lie was exposed many times before in Vietnam and so on and so forth. But you could also then always have said, but it was in the context of the Cold War and there were these forces um, and there were really these worries. But we ran out of excuses. We were put to the test and we instantly failed it in the most extreme manner possible. I mean, it was always almost like, like we were just waiting to implode um, morally. Um, and I mean, you know, the cheering that, that, led up the cheerleading to this war, uh, you know, sticks in my head to this day. And then the recantations and the, oh, we're, oh, you know, I wasn't the one, those bad people supported it, I was always against it. Um, you know, I mean, I'm only 30, but I feel in a way at least that now I've learned an important lesson for the rest of my life um, when it comes to looking at the world uh, and not being too optimistic about it. So, in the end, I think the worst thing about the last 10 years since 9-11 has been the utter uh, bare laying of the decadence and the hypocrisy of Western values. Um, and this is only going to stroke the culture war because now we have no more moral high ground from which to from which to fight from which to try to suggest to other people that they have to adopt our culture because it's clearly superior um, anyways church of sdfu always hoping for a better tomorrow but never being quite that optimistic i'll see you guys all later